In this video, we're going to get started with the TI-84 CE. So this is going to go through some key things that you're going to want to know when you first get your calculator to get started. And so the first thing you want to do is in the lower left hand corner, you're going to want to press the on key. And this is what I oftentimes refer to as the home screen. So you'll do a lot of your calculations here, whether you're adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Let's just do a simple example here. Say if I do 25 minus a negative 8. Now when I press enter, you see how it's giving me an error here? It says quit or go to. So if you ever make a mistake while you're using this calculator, just go ahead and arrow to the go to. These are your arrow keys in the upper right hand corner here, so up and down. And then go ahead and press enter in the lower right hand corner. And see how it hovered right above that minus sign? So on this calculator, when you're working with negative numbers, you're going to want to use this negative key here right at the bottom. Okay, so just to differentiate, you've got subtraction on the right, and if it's a negative number, you can use this negative key here at the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and press enter. Okay, and there we go. So now we have the correct answer. Now, if you want to clear the screen at any point, just go ahead and press the clear button over here on the right side, and that clears it out. Let's do some other examples. Let's just say we wanted to maybe work with some fractions. So a key feature here of the calculator for doing a fraction is you're going to press this alpha key, and then if you press this Y equals key, which mine's a little bit worn out here from, from sweat and from use and whatnot, let's go ahead and press that upper left-hand corner. See how it says N over D? That's like numerator over denominator. You're just going to press Enter, and there you can see you have a fraction. So I can press maybe 2, and I'm going to use the arrow key to arrow to the denominator there, 5, and I'm just going to press Enter. Now see how it gives us the fraction 2 fifths? If you want to convert it to a decimal, what you can do is go over to here on the left side where it says Math, so go ahead and press math. And then right below, see where it says DEC? Just arrow down and press enter and enter one more time. And there it goes and it converts it to a decimal. Another example, let's just say if we had uh, uh, seven divided by eight. Okay, so see how that's giving us a decimal? If we wanna go back to a fraction, we're gonna go back to that math key again in the left-hand side here. And now see this first one says FRAC fraction. Just go ahead and press enter and then enter one more time, and that's going to convert it to a fraction for you. So those are some handy uh, things to know. Now, another feature that you're going to want to know when you're working with this calculator is you're going to want to check what mode you're in. So right next to the second key here, see how it says mode? Go ahead and press mode, and you can arrow down here. The one you're probably going to be working with the most is either like radians or degrees. So you can see, let's say if I wanted to switch to radians, I'd press enter. Or if I wanted to switch degrees, I'm just going to arrow to the right and press enter. Once you've selected the one that you want, you're going to want to press second and then quit. So second and quits right next to that second key. And that takes you back to the home screen. So that's always want to check your mode when you're doing different operations to make sure you're in the correct mode. Now, sometimes when you're doing some calculations, you might want to use an answer from a previous line. So for example, if I had... Uh, maybe let's say I wanted to do five times, and then I wanted to use this answer from before, this 0.4. A couple options. You can use the arrow keys to go up to where that 0.4 is, and then press Enter here in the lower right-hand corner. And see how it puts it right there? And we press Enter one more time. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is, let's say I wanted to use this too. So say, for example, I do seven times, and I wanted to use this previous answer here. You can use this second key in the upper left-hand corner, and then right above the negative key here, see it says ANS, press that key and then press enter. So it's gonna take that previous answer, seven times two is 14. And that's really helpful when you have a, like a really long decimal or you wanna be a little bit more precise with your calculations. So you've got second answer, or again, you can just arrow up to the previous answer, press enter, it'll grab that number and you know bring it to that, to that current line. So that's uh, one feature. Now you can, again, you always use these up and down arrow keys. If you wanted to go back, Maybe you did a bunch of calculations and you forgot, oh, what was that answer again? You can just arrow up. And again, if you want to clear everything out, you can just uh, arrow down here to the bottom and then just go ahead and press clear here on the, on the right and that will clear the screen out. Okay, so let's take a look at some other features. Say, for example, maybe you're typing something and you've got like a long equation. Let's say you had 5 times uh, 2 times 3 uh, minus 8. And let's just say I made a mistake in here somewhere. Instead of retyping the whole thing, what you can do is use the arrow keys and maybe say, for example, like right here, this was supposed to be an 18. 
I can press the second key and then the delete key, see so right above it, that's how it says insert. And now I can press one. Okay, now that's 18. And now I can press enter. So you don't have to retype the whole thing. Now, sometimes you might want to, you want this whole, uh, let's say, expression again, you want to reuse it. You could press second and then this enter key, you see right above it, it says entry. So anything that you want that's above the key, you're going to press the second key first. Okay, and then entry. Okay, see how it brings back that whole long expression? And then maybe I can go and edit it and say, oh, maybe I want this to be a four instead and press enter. So that's a nice feature. So second uh, entry to recall the previous entry or second answer to pre recall the previous answer. Okay, so now let's go look at some other features. Occasionally you're going to want to use things like this pi key here or the natural base E. So again, all these uh, quantities that are above the keys, you're just going to want to use the uh, second key. So if I say second pi, we know pi is about 3.14, and it gives you a nice uh, longer um, number of decimal places there if you want to be a little bit more accurate with that. Let's take a look at some other features. Now, if you go over here to this math key right here on the left-hand side, okay, there's a lot of neat things here that you can do. So we've already talked about the fraction and decimal, but you could take like the cube root, of a number, that's what number four is about, or even the x root. So what I mean by the x root, so for example, if I wanted to take the fourth root of 16, that's saying what number times itself four times is 16, I can press enter. Now, if I wanted to raise, let's say, two to the fourth power, I would use this caret key over here. So this will raise it to any power, so two to the fourth power, and I get back 16. So again, if you want to take the square root, you could use this key over here, second, square root, so the square root of a number, like square root of 81 is nine. But if it's like the cube root or fourth root or fifth root, you know, et cetera, you can go over here to math and then you can select number five to pick whatever type of radical you wanna work with there. Okay, again, if you ever get lost with any of these menus, just go press second, quit. That takes you back to what I call the home screen. This is basically where you do a lot of your calculations. Okay, so now, We've talked about fractions, we've talked about decimals, but what, what the main feature here is that this is a graphing calculator, right? So how do we graph things? Let's go over here to the upper left-hand corner. Mine's a little bit worn out here. This is a, a Y equals, okay, we're gonna press Y equals. And you can see, you can put a whole bunch of different equations here at once and graph them. Let's just do one at a time. So let's say, for example, we wanted to graph a basic line like Y equals two X minus one. So see this X, T, theta and n key. This is what we call your like your variable key. So depending on what mode you're in, if you're in the function mode, it's going to give you the variable x. Okay. So that's that's that. And if you go over here to the upper right hand corner where it says graph, it's going to graph the line for you. Now if you want to zoom in on that, say for example you wanted to look at something a little bit more closely, you could press the zoom key and then you could press number two in Okay, and if I do that and press enter, now what you're going to want to do is, see this little cursor here? You can move this cursor wherever you want. Like, say, for example, I wanted to kind of zoom in on this area right here. Once I get the cursor where I want to zoom in and I press enter, it's going to zoom in on just that particular area right there. Now, if I want to zoom out, go back to zoom, I can hit zoom out. Or what I oftentimes do is I go to number six, which is called zoom standard, and that's like your standard window of 10 in every direction, so 10 right, 10 left, 10 up, 10 down. So it's like your basic uh, basic window there. Okay, now let's take a look at another graph a little bit more. Uh, oh, before we do that, let's take a look at graphing inequalities. This is kind of a neat feature. So I'm gonna go back to y equals, okay, and if I arrow with the arrow keys left and right, okay, to where, right here to the left, if I press enter, you can change the color of the line, but let's arrow down to where it says line. And if you use these left and right arrow keys, see how this is changing? Okay, now see right here, I see how it's like a triangle in the lower left-hand corner? Or if I go one more, see it's a triangle in the upper right-hand corner? So that's telling it whether you want to shade above or below, okay, the line. So in this case, let's say we wanted to shade above. I'm just gonna arrow down to okay, press enter. Let's press graph. Oh, okay, now you can see it's shading right above the line. Okay, so you can see it's like an inequality. You're graphing y is greater than or equal to. Okay, now if you want to change that back, just go back to y equals, arrow to the left here, press enter, 
arrow to the line, and you can use the left and right arrow keys uh, until you get to just like a solid line here. So enter, uh, let's see, go down to OK and press enter one more time. And let's graph it. Okay, and there's our line again. Okay, let's take a look at a little bit more uh, challenging equation now. So let's go back to y equals. Let's clear that out. So I'm just using the clear button here on the right. And let's try something a little bit trickier. So let's do our variable key x, the caret key, which raises it to a power. So we'll say to the third power. I'm going to use the arrow key to move down from the exponent position. Sometimes people forget that. They, if you keep typing, it'll continue to type in the exponent position. So arrow to the right to get down, minus 2 our variable key x, and now I'm going to use the square key over here. This is going to be to the second power, or you can use the caret key, but if it's just squared, I use the squared key here on the left. Okay, and then let's do plus 1. Okay, let's graph that. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so you can see it's a cubic graph. Now let's say we were interested in finding out maybe where this like low point is, this minimum. You can press the second calculate. See this calculate key right above the trace? So second calculate and let's just say we want that minimum value enter okay now what we're going to do is you see how here it says left bound you're going to use the left and right arrow keys to arrow just a little bit to the left of that point press enter then you're going to want to go a little bit to the right of that low point okay and I'll press see how it says right bound press enter one more time and then it says guess so hit enter one more and it's going to give you that minimum value. So in this case, it's about 1.3 is the x coordinate, and the y coordinate is negative 0.19 roughly. Another feature would be to find like the x-intercepts where it crosses the x-axis. So same thing, you would do second calculate, and this is called the zero. That's where the y coordinate is zero. Press enter. And what you want to do is you want to pick a point like let's go over here. Let's pick a point a little bit to the left of where it crosses the x-axis. Press enter. Pick a point to a little bit to the right and above the x-axis, okay, and then we're going to press enter, and then press enter one more time. So you're pressing enter three times, one to the left, one to the right, and then one more time. And it gives you where the y-coordinate is zero. That's when x is negative 0.6 roughly. So that's a nice feature as well. So if you just, again, go to second calculate, there's all kinds of things you can do. You can even find the value of the function at a particular x value. So for example, if I press enter for number one, I say, well, hmm, what's the y when x is equal to, let's just say, Three. Okay, see it says y is equal to 10. And so you can find the corresponding y value. See, what else can you do under there? You can find a maximum. You can find out where two graphs intersect. So for example, if I go back to y equals, and let's arrow down to the second uh, y equation here. Let's do y equals 4. Let's press graph. See how that's in red? If we want to find where these two graphs intersect, we're going to just press second calculate, intersection, enter. Now, see it says first curve, that's this blue curve here, and I like to arrow kind of a little bit closer to that point of intersection and press enter. Second curve, okay, we're pretty close to that point of intersection, we'll press enter. It says guess, hit enter one more time, and you can see it jumps to right where the two graphs cross at about 2.5 comma 4. So a lot of neat features under the uh, calculate uh, feature right here. Now, you can also use this trace feature. So if you press trace, what you can do using the left and right arrow keys, you can move along the curve and you can see the corresponding coordinates here below. If I want to change to, let's say, another graph, if I use the up and down arrow keys, see now I kind of change between the two graphs and then I can move along that, that new graph. So some neat features there. Now say for example I'm interested in just looking at a table. So instead of graph, I can just press second table and you can see here are the corresponding y coordinates for the first graph, the cubic one, and the corresponding y uh, coordinates for the second graph, the one in red. And so this is kind of nice if you just want to look at some points on both graphs. Let's see, what other features can you do? Oh, uh, with the zooming, again, if you go to the zoom, okay, we talked about how you could do zoom standard to kind of bring you back to, a, to the basic 10 by 10 window. But other times, what you might want to do is put in a custom window. So if you go to this uh, key right next to zoom to the left here where it says window, if you press window, you can change like the x minimum, the x maximum, the scale, like what you're counting by, whether you're counting by ones or twos or fives. Same thing with the y's. You can do the minimum, the maximum, the scale, what you're counting by. So that's a nice feature. And so those are some, some basic uh, things to get you started. Now, sometimes when you're working with the calculator, you might 
change something and just be completely confused like, oh, what happened? Like I did something to my calculator, it's not working like it used to when, when I first started. If you want, you can reset it to like the standard uh, factory settings. What you would do is you'd press this second key over here in the upper left hand corner and then this right above the plus key, see how it says MEM, like memory? So you press memory and if you go down to where it says reset, number seven, enter and then it says defaults, okay, enter, number two, reset, enter, and see now it's just, it resets it to what it was like when you first had the calculator. So you might kind of use that if you get kind of stuck and you're not sure, you know, where to go. Now, another feature that, before I kind of wrap this up, is sometimes you might want to write some type of an, a, a big expression, but you might want to use a particular value multiple times. So what I mean by that is like, say for example, you had, um, you wanted to make your value negative two. If you press this store key over here on the left, near the bottom here, STO, and you press your variable key, let's say X, so we're storing it under X. So for example, if I was to type in now X to the third power uh, minus four X plus one, it's gonna replace X with this X value, negative two. When I press enter, it's gonna calculate that value for us. So that's another nice feature. Now on my Mario's Math Tutor YouTube channel, I've got a playlist with many more tutorials here on the TI-84, different things that you can do with the statistics, um, with the graphing, with matrices, etc. So depending on what you're trying to learn about, uh, check out that playlist. I'll put it on the screen here if I can, and you can kind of peruse some of the different things you can do beyond these basics that we mentioned here. So great job. I'll see you in the other videos.